back to No Water River, and I am here once again with Lee Bennett Hopkins. Hello, Lee. Hello, Renee. And we are here with the second episode of A History of American Children's Poets of the 20th Century. And today um, is the 1930s, and Lee will be taking us through the appearance, let's say, of uh, seven new poets for children, or people who wrote for children, Carl Sandburg, Sarah Teasdale, Rosemary and Stephen Benet, Langston Hughes, Laura Richards, Aileen Fisher, and T.S. Eliot. So without further ado, I am going to hand it over to Lee to get us started. Okay. Well, we usher in the 1930s uh, with the genius of Carl Sandburg, uh, who wrote Vo this volume, Early Moon, which is 70 poems culled from his previous adult works, but did work, of course, with children. Interestingly enough, the book was illustrated by James Dougherty, who, won, um, who later won the Newbery Award for his book, Daniel Boone. Uh, again, it's interesting, these interrelated people and their literary careers. Uh, Sandberg's first book was Chicago Poems, published in 1916, uh, an adult book of poems. He went on to write more than 800 poems, uh, winning two Pulitzer Prizes. Uh, in my collection, I did in 1982, which was, was again one of the first books uh, of poetry of his work for children, uh, more than half of the selections were never published before for young readers. Uh, the book was done with wood engravings by Fritz Eichenberg. Um, Sandberg, of course, was born in 1878, died at the age of 89. Uh, at the time of his death, President Lyndon Baines Johnson issued a statement, which is quite beautiful and a wonderful tribute to Carl Sandburg. He wrote, Carl Sandburg needs no epitaph. It is written for all time in the fields, the cities, the face and heart of the land he loved and the people he celebrated and inspired. With the world, we mourn his passing. It is our pride and fortune as Americans that we will always hear Carl Sandburg's voice within ourselves, for he gave the truest and most enduring vision of our own greatness. Uh, last year, this book, Poetry for Kids, Carl Sandburg, uh, appeared in a very handsome edition edited by Catherine Benzel. Uh, so again, his poetry lasts and is used in classrooms and probably will be used forever uh, due to his incredible work. Um, moving on to Sarah Teasdale. Uh, Teasdale was born in 1884 in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, after her first poem was published, in a local newspaper at the age of 23. She continued to write adult poetry and won the 1980 Pulitzer Prize for her book, Love Songs. Uh, Stars Tonight versus New and Old for Boys and Girls is a slim volume which appeared in 1930, her only book for children. Again, interestingly enough, the illustrations are by Dorothy P. Lathrop, uh, winner of the first Caldecott Medal for Animals of the B Bible in 1938. Uh, her work is so lyrical, and I know you're going to share one of her pieces from Stars Tonight. Yes, uh, actually, I was really surprised when you had Sarah Teasdale on this list. Yes. Uh, because I was first introduced to Sarah Teasdale as an undergrad in my women's lit 
and my poetry um, classes. And I had no idea, and I loved her. Uh, she was always one of my favorites, and I had no idea that she wrote anything for kids. Uh, so Elise sent me this poem from, uh, uh, called There Will Be Stars, and I just fell in love with it. So I'm going to share that one with you. There will be stars. There will be stars over the place forever. Though the house we loved and the street we loved are lost, every time the earth circles her orbit, on the night the autumn equinox is crossed, two stars we knew, poised on the peak of midnight, will reach their zenith. Stillness will be deep. There will be stars over the place forever. There will be stars forever while we sleep. Beautiful. Gorgeous. She wrote a lot about stars. <laughs> um, it was interesting after a very failed marriage in 1929, uh, she became semi invalid. Uh, at the age of 48, she committed suicide uh, by overdosing on sleeping pills. Uh, so apparently, she had a tough a tough life dying that young and being so ill and infirmed. Uh, we moved to 1931 uh, when Rosemary and Stephen Vincent Panay published a book of Americans. Uh, this book is still in print. A lot of these books we can still get via internet. Uh, many of them are sold on sites, so you can look them up on Amazon, et cetera, whatever link you want to look them up on. Uh, Stephen Benet was born in 1898 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and grew up in a military family. After graduating from Yale in 1919, he continued studies at the Sorbonne, where he met his wife, Rosemary Carr, a native of Chicago. He wrote many adult works, including the 20, 1929 Pulitzer Prize winning John Brown's Body. A, a Book of Americans contains 56 verses, among them the haunting Nancy, Nancy Hanks, who of course was the mother of Abraham Lincoln. And you're going to share that poem uh, for us now. I am. Um, again, this one, uh, well, let me, I'm just going to read it first and then. So this is Nancy Hanks, 1784-1818. If Nancy Hanks came back as a ghost, seeking news of what she loved most, she'd ask first, where's my son? What's happened to Abe? What's he done? Poor little Abe, left all alone except for Tom, who's a rolling stone. He was only nine the year I died. I remember still how hard he cried. Scraping along in a little shack with hardly a shirt to cover his back and a prairie wind to blow him down, or pinching times if he went to town. You wouldn't know about my son. Did he grow tall? Did he have fun? Did he learn to read? Did he get to town? Do you know his name? Did he get on? Beautiful. I, yeah, I love this imagined scene of the mother uh, coming back to ask about her son. Uh, yeah, I mentioned earlier to you <laughs> before we started that the, the poem definitely made me uh, a little bit sad. Um, just uh, so simple, uh, the emotion in its simplicity is so strong. So yeah, really beautiful a poem from that book. And in a book of Americans, they cover incredible subjects uh, from Daniel Boone to Johnny Appleseed uh, to Clara Bar Barton, P.T. Barnum. It really is an extraordinary uh, collection of poems to have uh, to use with children. I love this book. Uh, Stephen died again very early 
uh, at the uh, in 1943 uh, at the age of 44 of a heart attack. I mean, they didn't lead very long lives. Uh, his wife Rosemary died at the age of 65 in 1962. We move on to uh, Langston Hughes, who was born in Joplin, Missouri in 1901. Uh, his very first poem, a classic called The Negro Speaks of Rivers, <coughs> appeared in 1921 in the Crisis Magazine, which was the official journal of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Uh, a prolific writer, as you know, and we all know, he created novels, plays, operas, and a host of children's books. Uh, 1932 marked the publication of The Dream Keeper and Other Poems. Reissued in various editions, the book has never gone out of print. A remarkable, a remarkable feat. Uh, after Hugh's death, in 1967, I was contacted by his publisher, Alfred Akinoff, to do a new collection, uh, Don't You Turn Back, uh, illustrated in woodcuts by Anne Griffel Coney, a Caldecott honor winner. The introduction was written by his very good friend, Arna Bontans. Both were important figures during the Harlem Renaissance. The 75th anniversary, I mean, these books keep coming out. The 75th anniversary appeared in 1994, illustrated by Brian Pinckney. Uh, I was quite honored to have been asked to write the introduction to the new, the new edition, <clears throat> as well as choosing seven additional poems, which I thought uh, should be included in the book. Uh, beginning the introduction, I write, little could he know that more than six decades after the Dream Keeper and other poems appeared, his passionate, sensitive, strong and mighty words would continue to be sung, shouted, whispered, hummed from farmlands to suburbs, from cities to countrysides, all over the world. His words really bring all of us hope uh, in his classic poem, Dreams, a poem I use with children and adults of all ages from kindergarten through senior citizens. He writes, Dreams. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, Life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field, frozen with snow. Beautiful words by an incredible poet. Uh, moving on to Laura E. Richards. She was born into a scholarly family in Boston, Massachusetts in 1850. She created over 90 books, including many, many biographies. In 1917, her Pulitzer Prize biography, co-authored with her sister Maud, was about her very famous mother, Julia Ward Howe, who wrote the lyrics to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. I think that's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> uh, many of her books for children focused on girls, uh, the most famous being Captain January that became a star vehicle film for the very young Shirley Temple. Uh, Tira Lira, Rhymes Old and New, came out in 1932, containing verses previously published in magazines with new verses added. Uh, a later edition published in 1955, this one, 
includes an introduction by Mayhill Arbuthnot, a noted critic of children's literature. Uh, Richards was a master of light verse, undoubtedly influenced by poets as Lear and Carol, creating characters like those they did, such as the Rummy Jums, and places as Ali Bazan. Uh, one of her classic poems, which is still read widely today, is Ella Telephony. Once there was an elephant who tried to use the telephant. No, no. I mean an elephone who tried to use the telephone. Dear me, I am not certain quite that even now I've got it right. However, it was he got his trunk entangled in the telephunk. The more he tried to get it free, the louder buzz the telephy. I fear I'd better drop the song of Ella Hop and Telephone. <laughs> so here we have really light verse, uh, which is remarkable, uh, coming from uh, such a prolific, prolific woman. Uh, you might, you have to marvel, marvel at the productivity because she was the mother of seven children. <laughs> How one does that with all those children, I can't imagine. Uh, she died in 1943. Uh, our next subject, Aileen Fisher, was born in 1906 in Iron River, Michigan. Uh, her first book, The Coffee Pot Face and Other Poems, was published in 1933. It still amazes me uh, because I still consider her a such a contemporary. Uh, Eileen was awarded the second NCT Award for Excellence in Poetry for Children in 1978. It was the year I chaired the committee. Uh, her life and work is highlighted in our series, Spotlight on NCT Poets, uh, which you will refer a link to. Yeah, uh, I'll so put you a link in the, um, in the blog post. Uh, in case you know for anyone who has missed that feature yeah. because it really is a yeah. uh, tons of her poems on that blog post. Yes. so do be sure to go take a look uh, i can't even believe that she's from the 30s too given the you know the type of poetry and the, the modernity of the poetry is uh, pretty amazing and her lasting work yeah. um we became lifelong friends uh, helene and i were very, very close, right up to her death in 2002. Uh, I truly miss her. And I fondly, fondly think of the many, many, many letters uh, that we exchanged. Uh, we wrote back and forth long before email, uh, tons of cards and letters. Uh, okay, we can end the decade with another actually adult poet, T.S. Eliot, who was considered one of the 20th century's major poets. He was born in St. Louis, Missouri to a very prominent family. In 1925, he left the United States, moved to England, uh, and at the age of 39, he became a British subject, renouncing his American passport. Uh, his work, of course, includes uh, classics such as The Wasteland, and stage plays, including The Cocktail Party, which is still being performed all over the world. Uh, in 1939, Harcourt published Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, illustrated by Edward Gorey, uh, which became an immediate classic. Uh, interestingly enough, it wasn't actually published as a children's book but it became quite a classic with children. Of course, Cats, the Broadway musical with lyrics by Andrew Lloyd Webber is performed worldwide. And the movie version is now in production. Interestingly enough, it will star Judy Dench as old Deuteronomy, a rather interesting, 
a rather interesting choice. It should be a wonderful movie. Uh, I know you're going to share a poem from Opossum. I look forward. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, I'm going to share a snippet of a poem because these are all quite long. So, uh, yes. and I had a trouble choosing because uh, my three favorites are The Naming of Cats, which is the first poem in the collection. And of course, I was attracted to doing Gus the Theater Cat. Um, but in the end, yes, it's quite long and he's quite a cat. Um, but in the end, I have decided to share um, the, first, the first stanza of Skimbleshanks the Railway Cat because uh, he's also quite a cat. So this is Skimbleshanks. Skimbleshanks the Railway Cat. There's a whisper down the line at 1139 when the night mail's ready to depart, saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? Has he gone to hunt the thimble? We must find him or the train can't start. All the guards and all the porters and the station master's daughters, they are searching high and low saying, Skimble, where's Skimble? For unless he's very nimble, then the night mail just can't go. At 11.42, then the signals nearly do, and the passengers are frantic to a man. Then Skimble will appear, and he'll saunter to the rear. He's been busy in the luggage van. He gives one flash of his glass green eyes, and the signal goes, all clear. And we're off at last for the northern part of the northern hemisphere. <laughs> it's and here is a marvelous, a marvelous print by Edward Gorey, which illustrates that poem. And of course, Gorey went on and on to become world famous artist. Yeah, and um, what, what a pairing. I adore Edward Gorey. Yes. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, he's just incredible. <laughs> Uh, I believe, didn't he also do the cocktail party at some point? I thought he might, maybe I'm making that up. Uh, but yes, what a great pairing. And uh, this type of um, the Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats is like perfect fodder for Gory. And yes. what, fun, what fun poems to perform as well for kids. You know, if you really want yes. to get on their feet and excited about poetry, um, you know, I mean, that's why they made a musical out of it. Although and even Sanch, reading, I don't know, I can't get past anybody but Betty Buckley. She's my gal for that. <laughs> <laughs> but reading these poems uh, to children before they even go to a production yeah. of Cats would uh, be very interesting. And again, this Cats is performed on cruise ships, uh, in, in high schools. Uh, it's been on Broadway for back and forth forever. <laughs> Yeah. And of course, it will be a staple in musical theater history. Uh, a really fascinating group of people uh, to talk about within just one decade, the 1930s. Definitely a, a vast group. range of types of poems and styles, for sure. And again, most of them were adult poets who came to appeal to children, with the exception of Aileen Fisher who really was one of the first children's poets of the decade, who wrote specifically for children. That's true. Okay, so we're finished with the 30s. Yay! Our next segment, yay! yay. Our next segment will be the 1940s, of course. Uh, it's going to be a short one, because interestingly enough, in the entire decade of the 1940s, only three poets emerged. Okay. County Cullen, Elizabeth Coatsworth, and Harry Bain. Fascinating, three within the entire decade. Well, it'll be interesting to talk a little bit to figure out, you know, maybe why that, that occurred. Seems odd. Yeah. But um, great. I can't wait then for our next episode of the 1940s. And for now, we're going to wrap up the 1930s. Uh, thank you again to Lee for your uh, immense knowledge and your research. I know that you put a lot of research into this series. So we really appreciate it. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of pretty much everybody. <laughs> so thank you again, and we'll see you for the next one.
And I thank you. We couldn't do this without you, my love. <laughs> well, <laughs> we do what we can. All right. Thank you so much, Lee. Till next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.